Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with a video where I'm going to tell you the 10 books that I picked out um, that I think are going to be really great books that I'll like. Uh, these are five star predictions, hopefully. Uh, and you know what? Um, sometimes there's like no real reason why I picked these. They're just books that I really think I'm going to like and hope that I'll really love them, I guess. That's why they're on this list. The first book on this list is The Conqueror Worms by Brian Keene. This is a horror book where these rains start falling, right? And it's falling and falling and cities are starting to flood and then from the depths of the fucking earth come these giant earthworms. And I'm assuming they conquer. Although I don't know if it's just because they destroy everything or if maybe they're intelligent. I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. I've at least liked all of what I've read by Keen so far, so I'm expecting this to be no different, although I've heard that this one is particularly good, so I'm hoping that I also really enjoy it. Next, I picked The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, and this is about, I believe, a Japanese island where items start disappearing, and most people don't notice, but the people who do notice, um, know that they should not say anything because there are these this force called the memory police who will snatch you up and it's bad that's all i really know about this this is a book that's been on my radar for quite some time uh i really waited a long time for it to for for me to be able to find it on sale somewhere and i just ended up buying it because i'm like i really i really want to read this book and it's obviously like a dystopian sci-fi book that I'm very excited about. I really try to pick a, a variety of books for this and this is one of the sci-fi books on on my shelves where it's like I really think I'm gonna love this and I hope I do. And next I've chosen The Deep by Alma Katsu. She also wrote The Hunger which was a um, kind of a retelling of the story of the Donner Party with a supernatural twist. And I believe that this is a very similar, except for it's about the Titanic's first expedition. And there's also a supernatural twist. I always really liked learning about the Titanic when it would come up in like elementary school history stuff. But as an adult, I have not like really I don't know. I don't really know if like what I learned about it as a kid is really quite exactly what happened. I mean, of course we all know it hit an iceberg and it sunk, but I don't know. I'm just interested in this. I think it'll be at least enjoyable, but I really did like The Hunger, so I'm hoping I really like this one too. Next is Uzumaki by Junji Ito. He is a very infamous horror manga author and I think this is probably his most well-known manga. It's definitely the thickest, is it? I don't know. I can't tell just by looking if this is um, more lengthy than Tomie, but I've read Gyo, I've read Tomie, I love them both, so this is next on my list. Um, this is about a town who becomes obsessed with spirals, which is just so bizarre, but I don't know, like, what, what could possibly go wrong? I'm excited to know what could possibly go wrong. All right, the next book I've picked for this list is The Three by Sarah Lotz. I've been putting this off for so long, but it's always a book that I look at on my shelves and I'm like, I really think I'm going to like this. Um, I've only read one thing by Sarah Lotz. It was in a short story collection and it ended up being one of my favorite stories in the collection. So I'm really hoping that, you know, this is also one of my favorites. Um, there's a very short synopsis here and I'm going to read it to you. It says, Black Thursday, the day that will never be forgotten, the day that four passenger planes crash at almost exactly the same time at four different points around the globe. There are only four survivors. Three are children who emerge from the wreckage seemingly unhurt, but they are not unchanged. And the fourth is Pamela May Donald, who lives just long enough to record a voice message on her phone, a message that will change the world. The message is a warning. 
what could this be? I'm so excited. I love creepy kids things. I love um, like, I don't know if it will get into any like survivor story type of a deal with the plane crashes happening and stuff, but oh boy, I'm just really looking forward to this. Next here I have If I Can't Have You by Greg Olson and Rebecca Morris. This is about Susan Powell's death and the subsequent tragedy that affected her family. Uh, Susan Powell's disappearance is one of the most interesting and tragic cr tr true, cr ugh, true crime cases I've ever heard. There is a absolutely banger podcast called Cold where um, the narrator did just the deepest dive possible on this case, but I'm really looking forward to reading something about it finally. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's really such a sad story. And if I could pick one true crime case that could be solved, it very likely, if I had to, if I had to, it would probably be um, Susan Powell's disappearance. And like solve it, find her body, figure out what happened because it's just a big mystery and it's very sad. Next on this list is kind of just something I picked almost randomly, just because I really wanted to read it. This is Fable by Adrian Young, and this is kind of a YA fantasy story, I believe. This is about a young girl named Fable whose mother dies um, while, they're, while her family's on a ship, and the next day her father drops her off at this like pirate island. I don't know. And so she like can't leave the island because she's left with nothing. So she's got to find a way off the island and a way to, I don't know, I guess find her father and figure out what happened and stuff. I've just, I've heard that the series is really good and I want to try it out. Next, I have The Nightly Disease by Max Booth III. I've now read two of his works and I've liked them a lot, both of them. So logically, I'm going to have to read The Nightly Disease, which he, I've seen him say that this, I believe that this is the favorite, his favorite thing that he's written. And um, I don't know, the synopsis, it's not really about much. It's just like a clerk who works nights at a hotel and there's something going on at the hotel. So I really, I don't even know what this is about, but I have a feeling it's going to be a good one. Next is Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. I'm very, extremely excited about this book. This is about a young mother who thinks that she might be turning into some sort of were dog. And that's all I know about it. And that's all I need to know about it. It's called Night Bitch. It looks fantastic. I know it was very buzzy when it first came out and I'm going to read it. Last, I have The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Brusset. This is a nonfiction book I really don't know what it's going to be about, but um, uh, I really do still have a soft spot in my heart for dinosaurs and things about dinosaurs. I really like to learn about dinosaurs still, um, even though I'm not like a five-year-old child. Uh, so yeah, I read Jurassic Park last year and it was so much fun. And this is nonfiction, obviously, but I'm hoping um, it will be like a really fun nonfiction read. I I have so many interesting nonfiction books that I haven't picked up yet that I own. And so I'm, I'm thinking that I'll really like this. It looks like it's going to be fun. A New History of the Lost World. It's touted as a masterpiece by the Washington Post. I just really want to read this. So those are five of the books I'm most looking forward to reading this year. And these are books that I think I'm going to love. I really hope I'm going to love them. I'd love to know if you have any books on your list for this year that you think will be your favorites or any of your favorites from last year. I'd love to hear about them. That is all I have for you today though. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.